This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're going to go through now uh, Chapter 7 of the uh, free lecture notes for um, Paper P1, which is Standard Costing and Basic Variance Analysis. Uh, now, this should uh, really be a revision of um, what you've studied previously, uh, but we do need to go through it properly. Um, you may have learned it in different ways in the past, you may have forgotten things. Uh, but also, it's terribly important that you really understand what we're doing. Certainly when we come to the calculations of variances, um, although there are what you might call lots of rules for doing the calculations, it's very important that you aren't simply learning rules, that you do actually understand why we're doing what we're doing and why the rules are what they are. Uh, not just for this chapter, but because um, in the next chapter we'll look at what we call more advanced variances, um, which aren't difficult, but provided you do really understand basic variance analysis. So I do want to spend some time here um, making sure it is clear I'm not prepared to just go through here's a rule, learn it sort of thing, even though um, there is a fair bit to learn. Uh, the first bit, though, is uh, on standard costing. Uh, and because it's the first three pages, this is really just um, written. Uh, and so it's very much up to you to read it yourself. I'm not going to uh, talk through every line. That would be silly. Uh, but we have mentioned most of it before anyway. Uh, that the cost card, we mentioned that, I think, in the um, very first chapter. And there's an illustration quick reminder on the second page, illustration one, a standard cost card for a product, where we've effectively budgeted what we expect our units to cost to produce. So materials, for example, um, we've budgeted that each unit will take two kilos of material, that the materials will cost $20 a kilo, so each unit will cost $40 for materials. Similarly, labour, we expect to spend three dollars, variable overheads nine, fixed overheads. Here, I think clearly they're using absorption costing. But we've got a full cost, an absorption cost, it should cost 67 a unit. We expect to sell for 100, we expect a profit, a standard profit of 33 a unit. So like, there's our cost card. And the use is paragraph 2.1. Uh, well, repeat it again, what we're saying, I think, the first chapter. Um, the relevance, the reason we do a cost card is to help us decide on a selling price to be able to value inventory and so on. But the desperately important one in the context of this chapter um, is that that's what we expect to happen, that's what should happen. Each unit should cost us 67. As we actually do produce then we can check, perhaps monthly, but there's no rule there, but perhaps monthly we can check how much did each unit cost to produce? Did we achieve the 67 we aimed for or not? You know, materials, we should be spending 40 a unit. If we discover that we're actually spending $42 a unit, we need to find out why. It could be factors outside our control, you know, it could be just the price went up that we have to pay, uh, but it could be problems internally. Maybe, for instance, we were using more than two kilos a unit because we were wasting material, and therefore it was costing more. Well, if we find that we are using too much material, we can then examine why is it happening and try and correct the problem. And that's the variance analysis we're coming to shortly comparing what we actually spent with what we should have spent uh, and finding out why it's happened. Um, I've already said I'm not going to read all three pages to you, but uh, uh, please, please read it properly. Uh, but on the third page, quite importantly, uh, do go through the different types of standard. Um, you see, when we're doing the cost card, we are estimating what we should be spending on materials, what we should be spending on labour and so on, what we expect to spend. 
but there are various ways of going about it. You'll see, um, without going through all four, that an ideal standard, for example, um, it's saying, well, how much should we spend if everything went perfectly? Perfect operating conditions. You're in a perfect world, you'd never waste any material, for example. And so an ideal one is assuming everything does go perfectly. Um, but although that's obviously something to aim for, in real life, things don't work perfectly, and it's perhaps a bit unrealistic, you know? If there were ideal standards on that previous illustration, each unit should cost 67, but we know things aren't going to be perfect. We know from the very beginning uh, that things are going to cost a bit more. Uh, and so the third one, an expected attainable standard. There we take into account the real world and say, well, realistically, how much material do we expect to use and so on. So there's no rule about how we set standards. Uh, that's up to the individual company. Uh, but uh, I've already said, do read through all four. I think it's written fairly clearly. Uh, be clear what the four different types of standard are. However, what I want to spend most time on, as I've already said, is the variance analysis, where we've got all the arithmetic. Uh, and as I said uh, a, a couple of minutes ago, I'm not prepared to just write down rule, rule, rule. I will write down the rules and you must learn them. Uh, but it is vital that it's not just learning for learning's sake, that you are clear uh, what it is we're doing. You'll be tested uh, that you do understand it. And also, I think you'll see as we go through, if you understand why we're doing what we're doing, then it cuts down the pure learning. Um, I think the rules become kind of common sense. Anyway, we'll pause in the next lecture. I'll go straight on to the example uh, on the fourth page, exercise one, variance analysis.